Today we're looking at bird's nest ferns and you can grow them outdoors in the garden and some of them are great for growing indoors as well. Robin from Fern Acres Nursery is going to show us some of the different varieties that are available and talk about how to grow them. Uh, there are two main varieties of bird's nest fern in Australia, Asplenium australasicum and Asplenium nidus. These are all natural variations of those two plants and we'll talk a bit about each one and then tell you the growing conditions um, and show you some we have growing naturally here. This one is a narrow leaf crested bird's nest. It starts off at the base quite narrow and then widens as it comes up and then bifurcates or splits and continues to split creating little fingers on the ends. This next one is the broadleaf crested and you can see quite a bit of difference in the width of the foliage. The broadleaf crested doesn't split in the same way that the narrowleaf crested does, but you can see on an older plant, more mature plant, creates ruffles on the end of the foliage. This is a lasagna or bird, lasagna bird's nest. Commonly called this because it has the ripple right through the leaf, similar to what a, a sheet of lasagna will have. They all grow the same. There's no difference in growing techniques from one bird's nest to another, but they're just variations, natural variations that occur. This last one is Lady Victoria bird's nest. Like the lasagna bird's nest, it has a ripple, but the ripple on this one is just along the edge of the foliage. Quite a pretty one and one of my favourites. Um, as a mature plant, it has quite broad leaves as opposed to the lasagna, which has narrower, more compressed leaves um, and can be grown as an indoor plant. Uh, requiring a lot less water than most ferns indoors um, and most ferns in general. Bird's nest ferns naturally grow either as lithophytes on rocks or epiphytes on trees. It's important to remember that because they grow as lithophytes or epiphytes, if you have them in your garden or you're growing them indoors, not to overwater them, they can get very fussy. Um, if you're growing in the garden or in a fernery where you have a sprinkler system, it's important to not plant them at the same ground level as everything else, but to uh, only half or part plant them in the ground and mound up around them so that you're creating more drainage so that you don't have to cut off sprinkler systems and work around them. This is the spore pattern on um, the back of a mature leaf of a bird's nest fern. Commonly we get asked about what sort of pest or disease this is. Uh, it's not a pest or disease, it's just the plant trying to produce seed for reproduction. And commonly this will start off as little striations on the back of the leaf that are quite pale. And then as the mature or as the seed matures and becomes ready to be sown, um, it gets this dark brown color. It's not, the brown is not actually the seed, but the caps over the seed and the spore will tend to be bright yellow. That's it for bird's nest ferns. For more information on all sorts of other ferns and indeed all aspects of gardening, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, Good luck with your gardening.